right, so today we're here with the, I can't talk right now. So today I'm here with Michelle Phoenix Riley. Um, so Michelle is obviously a phenomenal telekinetic uh, practitioner. So Michelle, how did your spiritual journey begin? By accident. By accident. <laughs> Can you elaborate? <laughs> well, I, I, I kind of wanted to be more spiritual and I was always interested in, in it, but a year ago, I scared myself. I was sitting somewhere after just starting to meditate and thinking, I want to create that in my life, something from stress in the mainstream. So what happened was I was sitting in the million mile stare that you get sometime in deep thought, which I didn't know at, at the time. This was April 4th, my Angelo's birthday. Also Martin Luther King, when he was shot, this was a profound day for me. Right, so right. Something was deep inside of me already. So I was just thinking, and I was staring at a counter, and there was a cord coming off of the end of the counter that moved. And I, cause, and I, I didn't realize I was even staring at it, and I thought, well, that's odd, it just shifted. So I go back into staring again in that same mode and energy, and it moved again. And, and then I was like, okay, is the air conditioner on? Is my cat, you know, here's my key right here, around that moved it? No. And I thought, is there something going on? So I thought, I'll get into the same energy and look at it again with intention this time. And it moved twice as much. And it scared me. I ran out of the room. I thought it was a ghost. I didn't know what it was. Wow. And then I looked up online. Um, I was like, what's going on? Am I crazy? Did I move something? Is it ghosts? So I, immediately I go to online and I find this Sean guy who had- Oh, you his found kids. Sean, okay, cool. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna be interviewing Sean on June 2nd, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. He is the first person I ever didn't think a ghost was in my house or um, that I was crazy. Right, <laughs> it's, right. It's a thing, it's an energy flow thing and a, a focus thing, like on a focus right. wheel kind of kind of thing. And I didn't even know what it was yet, but what he did and then uh, realized that it's an energy moving thing. And so I did all the experiments. Once I learned that this is a good thing, I didn't scare myself anymore. How can I use it? I stayed up till four in the morning playing with tinfoil under glass. And once I got that on video, I was like, where the heck do I go for that? And I found Antonio. Oh, that's how you found Anthony. Okay. That's how I found Antonio. Cool. And I thought, there are other people out there doing this and interested? And then the rest is kind of history. Then there's um, Trevor Seven on, oh, on YouTube, yeah. which I learned how to eat and juice and uh, use uh, right. distilled waters, just, you know, right. little hints that stuff I was already doing, not realizing that helped. Wow. And, okay. Yeah. And then doing uh, meditations with Qigong, which wow. I was doing for just feeling the energy because I love to dance. I am a professional sculptor by trade. Oh, you are? Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, I do that for a living. That's what I do. I've done uh, seven life-size government grants in bronze and uh, a seven, uh, or, uh, um, six-ton sculpture of my Angelo, wow. okay. 21 feet tall, that went to the Smithsonian in 2018. Okay. And I just was understanding the law of attraction uh -huh. and testing it out about a year ago, the same time when something moved on me. Right, right, right. And I, in my garage in Carson City, I wanted to send a message to Washington, D.C. So I thought, I'm going to try this meditation, get into a higher vibration, and see if it works. And I, and and when I got accepted to the Smithsonian, they came to me and they paid for it. It was grant. Everything lined up. It happened. Right, right. Working with the Maya Angelou Foundation, all of that. Right. But here, here, here's the thing. I, out of the blue, a year ago, I said, well, if I can wish for anything I want, I would love to be able to move sculptures like the monks did when they levitated with their horns. Right. Vibration. And they yeah, would move yeah. boulders. I, I, I saw videos about that. And they could levitate. And I, I, I half-heartedly said, I want to move my art. If, there, if that is a thing in the vibration, I want to learn. And then shortly after, on my Angelo's birthday, who I wanted to learn to move, I moved something. But it, it was just a tiny thing. But that's a seed. That's a seed 
a mustard right, seed. Right. It can grow into a mighty tree. Right. So, so you know, um, it's, it seems like I find a common denominator. It seems like a lot of these really artistic people um, tend to uh, be drawn to telekinetic abilities and stuff like that. I, I saw see that common denominator, you know, um, like, I mean, I, like, you know, you mentioned Anthony. I mean, Anthony's obviously, um, you know, an He's artist. in a world class of his own. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. And, you know, several people in Anthony's group is also drawn to art as well. So, yeah, I think, I, I don't know if it's like, you know, that creativity uh, of art that kind of, you know, maybe changes the brain function or something like that. I, don't know I think so. It's, it's a yeah. freedom from our structure we were programmed into. Right. And it helps you release those sometimes crippling beliefs and sometimes they're good for foundations right right um because i am not a traditionalist in qigong i i you know i have people who are black belts and beyond in that right and say you know nothing about qigong but what i'm doing organically what my my what i call inner being higher power uh uh energy flow contract i get mm. guidance that how to move and how to breathe and it's good to follow, you know, some some traditional techniques if you're like totally starting from scratch, because at least gives you an idea of what's going on. Mm -hmm. But these things started happening happening naturally for me, and it was like an out inner guidance flow. Right. But when I try to stop that and control it and say I need to learn Qigong this way, I took a couple of lessons and I lost my flow. I couldn't move things. Mm. So I, for me, this is good news and bad news for people. What works for me, we're all snowflakes, right? We're all different and we all filter things differently and we're all shaped different and we all learn differently and we're all ready for information differently at different right. levels. You've got to, for me, go with the flow. And I, I can teach whatever I did work for me may not work for you. Right, right, yes. So I can give you an essence of what works for me but the best guidance I could ever give anybody on this is um, this is why I started a tiny little group because everybody was so serious. I had a Russian guy with an institute on telekinesis contact me and he's so serious. He's got an office and he's got a big building and everything. Right, right. I created a tiny who, group who, called. If you don't mind me asking, who, who's this Russian guy that contacted you? I, I can send you a link. I can send you a oh, link. Cool. He, you, you have to translate because he doesn't speak English. Oh, okay. okay. But um, he was following me for a while, and, oh. and I was able to do actually more than he could do. And it made me think, well, with my non-traditional teaching, I mean, I felt I'm doing this and more, not saying it's better. Nothing is ever better. I'm not dominant. He's not dominant. Right. It is a collaboration of we came together, and we could share information. But when you try to control another person on how they learn, or teach then to me it's not an energy flow but right, with right. with your videos there's an energy flow oh I tell me how there's an energy flow right, right and we can learn from each other right right I'm so sorry L let me let me invite Anthony now on um, my promise to invite Anthony right now so okay okay yes, yeah he is the man to let me know I was not weird and there's a community <laughs> yeah yeah no I, I yeah I I yeah credit my uh, success to Anthony as well. I mean Anthony's so so awesome. Literally, so are, are you fairly well known in, in in your niche or do what? So are it, it, within the sculpture niche, are you fairly well known? Like are you like a pretty well known person? I'm getting to be. I've done a few things. I'm not famous by any means. It's not my intention. What my t intention is through art is to document history. And I used to say, what do you want to say 500 years from now? Because I work in bronze and larger in life. And what I want to do with my art is if I reincarnate, which I believe in, right. I want to be able to recognize my own work and how it affected culture and uh, evolution through our processes about female and uh, uh, colored communities. Right. I think that right. we all have something to say. So that's why I did a, a huge sculpture, 21 feet, six tons of my Angela, because she, to me, is like a beacon and light of, you know, in Martin Luther King, I think they are representing the whole 
spectrum of the rainbow, not just one or two. Right. I believe that I want to uplift everybody. Right. And so I think everybody has unique things to say. And if it has a good energy flow, I'm going to tap in. Like when it comes to spirituality and stuff like that, you're relatively new to, new to this then, right? I mean, you know, yes, I am. Um, I, I, I'll give you just a quick background. I was raised Mormon, then went oh. totally off. Yeah, very strict as a child. And then when I um, started running track and doing deep breathing, six-time All-American, three-time gold medalist in the high jump, it, it changed. Really? Me. Wow. Yeah. And, and I, I know, was all, thinking, all American, like in college or all American in like, college, college. Yeah. University. Oh, right on, right yeah, on. Yeah. I was a college athlete too. So yeah. 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 And I loved it. I, I did the high jump, but, and I, it changed me to a perspective that, I shifted my paradigms and I could not do the traditional rituals of religion right, right. and the suppression of religion. I, I was beyond. So I kind of went off and did my own thing and was like anti-religion for a while. And I, I have to say it has a place in humanity for 3d, 5d, 6d thinking. It's, it's kind of like, you know, you take a class in Taekwondo it's your basics, but I think there's so much more that is out there that if you raise your vibration, you, you can connect to it. It's um, you, they call it the ascended masters or whatever. I, I don't think you have to wear certain color robes or anything. I think it's more organic for at least me. And I, I appreciate and learn from and gleam from what can I apply in my life what I'm ready for actually oh, right. so I'm very new at it and and I studied Buddhism and um, shamanism uh, Native American Navajo mm -hmm. a little bit of a little bit of everything and a lot of for me what I'm tuning to it used to be um, uh, shamanism but Native American I'm, I'm starting to come back to and there's a small percentage in our, our family line of Hopi Indian because I was born in Phoenix that's where I got the name, the middle name, Phoenix. Uh, right. I also am Phoenix Rising because my art studio with my nine government grant molds for bronze burnt down to the ground. So I'm literally rising from the ashes and recreating my idea of what art is. Wow. So that's how I got the artistic name Phoenix. Wow. Um, so I'm just tapping into life is supposed to be fun and beautiful, and exciting. And when I meet people like you and Antonio and, and Sean, Right. Those passions of wanting to build large and life-size monuments. Um, I have as much passion for telekinesis as I do that. And I've been training for being um, an artist s since eight. I had lessons. Wow. So okay, okay. I'm just now starting uh, a year ago on telekinesis. Mm -hmm. And I am as passionate. And if I can say something with that or help or guide mm -hmm. it it is my full-time thought my heart i wake up in the morning and not so much sculpture jump out of bed to get ready for it but it's the telekinesis now that is really passionate and i, I want to combine the two and i got a couple when i went to sedona arizona mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um have you ever heard of uh bell mountain a vortex of energy kind of thing there I mean, I know Sedona is a sacred place, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I want to explore that. And I just was curious about it. Anyway, I went there and did some meditation on Bell Rock, which is supposed to be one of the best vortex. And I'm, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. Just to right. explore. I'm, I'm not a professional. I'm not anything. I just happened to end up on a full moon, lion moon, on Bell Rock. And I'm doing meditations, and I feel, I feel an energy surge and just you know playing with qigong right. i feel the energy naturally and i was able to walk the streets later and look at sculpture because that's what i do that's my you know living is right. uh being a sculptor right. so i'm looking at the sculpture and i come across these um windmill things are metal and just gorgeous and i immediately think of antonio would go nuts here and i thought why not try myself and i was yeah. able to move these beautiful sculptures mm. with, with, with just an energy flick of stop and, and turn now. And 
it was unreal. But I don't, I don't even know if it's because I had, I don't think you have to sit on a mountain or, you know, walk down a street or anything like that. But I think that we're guided to where we need to be when we need to be there. Right, right. So currently, how many hours a day do you train, uh, whether it's telekinesis or whatever? I, I train for the Olympics, and that was really hard, so I use a different thing. I say play because okay. training is, is a discipline for me. <laughs> and so if you want to, say, train into experiment, um, it's the same thing for me, really, and anybody. Right. But I can't help it. I can't not. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, on the average, minimum four hours to six hours. To really? Six hours. Wow. You're very dedicated. <laughs> wow. No, I'm just a spaz and I love it. it. Even when I'm sculpting, I've got two or three chief things going or outside the window, I've got a windmill mm -hmm. or I've even got an incense burning in the corner. Right. That I can swirl the smoke. Right, right. So what do you do more? Do you do, you more, do, you do more of the... the um, the, the, the aerokinesis type stuff more or do you do more of the indoor stuff you know when i first learned that we could move stuff this was just so fascinating to me i did a one of everything i did i spun cheese spin and then i did under glass then i did it underwater i've never seen anybody else do it i threw the underwater. gauntlet down can you can you explain? underwater what, what it you took me underwater? two hours to balance the stupid piece of tinfoil on the water because water bubbles after a bit and it will tip you off your needle but I got it. I'll, I'll 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 send this video on this link of underwater. And I I'm just this is like my fourth video. I didn't know it was something, but I've never nobody ever did it. And I was like, you, I had to go into at least. I'm sorry. So I'm a bit confused. So underwater meaning like, yeah. Oh, just just in a jar. In a, jar. A, 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 a a container of of water. And the cheat spinner was sunk and put on a piece of clay on rock with a needle. And then I took a piece of tinfoil, a small one, a, a round shape, like a thimble almost. And I held it with tweezers and had to shake it because, you know, you put water and then it bubbles up and it catches the tinfoil and yeah, flip it off the needle. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to visualize what, what that's like. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know yeah. what? I, I, yeah. Cool, cool. But but that's, just, but that's great, though, that you're you know using your creativity, kind of like Anthony, to uh, experiment with different. Um, oh heck yeah! Houses. I was like, let's get creative. What else can we do? I anything, right. and then what I started learning is I would do these meditations because I was kind of addicted to it, and and feeling the energy and connecting to what I call source when you feel the flow, the qigong moving. Through. Right, right. You start your day like that, and then I would go to cook a meal. And I'd grab a knife and I'm cutting something. I set the knife down and the knife moves and it starts to move on its own. And, and I was like, and then I feel it connected to my body when I'm moving, it moves. So I grab it immediately and come to my glass table and play with it. Whatever moves on me, I'm like, oh, I must be ready to play with this. And I spun a knife this way and that way. And I was like, that's what I was ready for at that time. And then I did a peanut butter jar and then a, a bottle of water. And then I was like, I was like anything that moved on me I grabbed and I went to play with nice, nice. That's really things cool. move around you and you're not even aware of it and it's nice. part of your energy flow so people need to oh that's just shifted you know move and, and have those thoughts and feelings again it might shift again and then you know you got a connection nice nice that's really <laughs> cool okay, okay so Michelle what is your ultimate goal um with with the kinetics do you want to be able to get to the point where and I asked this pretty much to all my uh, all the guests that come on my show. Um, what is your ultimate goal uh, with your abilities? Like, do you, you want to get to the point where maybe you can like levitate your body and stuff like that? Oh, I'm very interested in all of that. There are monks and you know and ministers and and uh, all sorts. Of, I I will. Uh, that's always a goal. But my number one goal is to let people know that we can even play with this stuff. Number one is right. yes, you can do it too. Number two is if I ever can harness any of this energy. Mm -hmm. can it help or heal people but if anything at all keep it playful and teach them that they even can think that way that's that's right. my basic goals right right yeah yeah absolutely so do you have personal experiences with like healings and stuff like that or i do with myself yes i do um i had at uh 10 years ago i had a ripped lung that filled up with blood and, and i ended up in the emergency room they had to uh -huh. Uh, drain that and then I I re-ripped that 
uh, coming back from Sedona of all things. Oh, wow. and, and I you aren't like spiritual at this point at all. In my own new way, understanding, yes. Oh, you okay. then, then no, I had to go to the hospital ten years ago, and they had I had a seventy-five thousand dollar overnight medical bill that really crippled my business at the time. Right. So I, I know what I went through that and I experienced it. And I knew what that felt like. And that happened again. I ripped, re-ripped the same lung and I wasn't even able to sit up it, or anything without just hyperventilating. And I, and I didn't want to go to the hospital, did not want to go. So I said, I have everything to gain and nothing to lose. You can heal your body. I'm just going in, into the meditation. I know. And I'm going to feel it and see what happens and use my intention. And I did it. I had to do it for a full 16 hours because you can't sleep like that. You, you got like a cracked rib and you're bleeding. The, you right. breathe and, and you jerk because it's so sharp. It's so hard. You can't even breathe deep because of that. Right. So I sat there. I put on some meditation, Hertz Frequency music. Right. Um, and I meditated. And within 16 hours, I was able to walk off that couch stretch move it was still felt like a bruise but it wasn't like it was and it did so well within the next day i went for a bike ride with my husband in tahoe wow I swear to God. that's, that's a, my oh. own pers personal experience i have one other one too but the same thing that was going on with this um and tony was playing with balloons so i had a balloon did you say balloons, balloons like helium balloons like oh, with really? smiley face. I, I don't remember Anthony doing a demo like that. Oh, and I had a balloon that I'd been playing with. And mm -hmm. here's the interesting thing. I don't know what the connection is yet, but I had a balloon in the corner of my room, not touching the wall, ceiling, or television where the meditation was, hovered for those exact 16 hours. You know, I had the heater going on. People were walking around. The balloon hovered in the same position the whole time I was in that, that frequency. And then as soon as I realized I could breathe and move, and I said, okay, I'm good. I think I'm going to get up. And I went to get up. The balloon dropped right to the ground. Okay. And, it, and it stayed there. It was like it was out of something. My connection, I don't know what it was, but I was able to get off, off the couch. Now, I don't know what that is yet. I, do, I, I don't claim anything other than I'm just reporting it, tag your it. Things like that happen. <laughs> wow. So when you're in that energy field, that frequency, um, I kind of dabble with, um, uh, oh, what's the institute? Is it the Moore Institute? No, it's is it the, the Monroe Institute. Yeah, the I Monroe know. Institute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, with the yeah. binaural beats. I was using binaural beats, and I was in a deep focus. So, so I've done that before with a, a, another balloon that stayed right by my head. I just, my husband got me a helium balloon machine because I'm experimenting with this Very and so I had a tiny balloon that I deflate a little bit enough so it hovers you know it medium in the room and I was able to have this in that meditation this blue balloon and I have that video too um, for over an hour just stay right around my head and just stay right here didn't go up didn't go and and doors were open there were things moving and it stayed right there and I only videotaped five minutes of it because who wants to see that right Right, right, <laughs> Although I'm going to set right. stuff up if, if, if anybody ever wants to see that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to post it because like, right. okay, here's an hour of this balloon by this girl's head. What is up? <laughs> right, right, right. So Michelle, do you have a YouTube channel? By the way, no, I'm just really playing with this. I'm very um, new at this. This is why I'm so grateful for you guys like Anthony, because a, a person like an amateur like myself can play. Well, yeah, I, I don't know if you're an amateur. I mean, I've seen your, some, a few of your videos on Facebook. I mean, they're really good. <laughs> so. Well, I started a little tiny club. It's like 14 people calling it Magic Kitten Wizards because everybody wanted to know this serious stuff. And I'm like, I'm just playing. I'm just going into vibration and meditation. And I'm playing. So I, I this is so you can just, you know, there's no wrong answers. There's no wrong approach. There's no, you must meditate 10 minutes a day. Although I recommend that highly, I, I don't say this, you got to do this many hours of this or this and this. I want you to naturally playfully know that you can do it and tag your it. Like if right. somebody's rolling a peanut butter jar all over the place and I get out of bed Saturday morning because I, you know, I wake up at like four in the morning. I see this video. I jump out of bed. And I, I got the same peanut butter. I'm going to try it. And then I do it. And I don't, it's the high frequency energy and beliefs. 
right. that I want to tap into. Um, I'm just trying to see how far I can go without studying. I do meditate. I do li listen to frequency music and I do juice four to five times with like kale and ginger and, you know, uh, four times a week. And I do drink distilled water. That's what, um, uh, uh, we're supposed to do for magnetism like the clouds right um, right right so i you know that's that's all i am going to put out there for anybody who but i'm able to close doors I, oh, the what? Whoa, yeah. whoa whoa you, you got to that point where you can close doors like seven does yes <laughs> that was, the, that you was the call, if you can if you're at that point michelle you should definitely not call yourself an amateur <laughs> <laughs> I am an amateur because no, this is this is the great news why you're doing this video because I am an amateur. I, and don't I got inspired so. by I, did, I disagree with you. If you can close a door, that's that's <laughs> phenomenal, Michelle. That's pretty good. Well, you know what? And, and, and snuff out fire. I can't start fire, but I can snuff it out. But these are just that's the playful good. things that's I try. Wow. Okay, okay. And and spin stuff underwater, a little tea spinner underwater. Mm -hmm. um, I can roll a can off the table. Um, and a jar of peanut butter and a jar of water, but I can't do it on like performance. I have to get right, into meditation. Right. And what helps me is I saw seven, uh, luminous number seven shut a door. So I play with it, but you don't take it too serious because as soon as you do, nothing moves. Right, I, I get really right, stupid, right. but when I'm playful and excited and in uh, belief, attitude of gratitude, and I raise my vibration and go try it, boom, it happens. It's like, right, what? right. That's, that's awesome. how it works. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's really cool, Michelle. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, like for me personally, I yeah, maybe that's perhaps what I'm lacking because because I mean for me, some days I am like, you know, decent, but some days I'm back to being like a real true beginner like some days i can't even like because i mean i me too i mean some days i can't i could barely move you know uh a piece of paper um under non-seal container and stuff like that i definitely am not at the point where i can do like seal containers live yet on facebook and stuff like that because i'm not because i have to get you know good enough and yeah, you have to have actually, momentum. Uh, yeah, I mean, mo most of the time I can do, you know, non-seal container, you know, uh, side wheel spinning, you know, live most of the time. Like I would say ninety-five percent of the time. But yes, <laughs> under glass, I, I yeah, I'm not, I'm not ready for that yet, for sure. So, yeah. yeah, I can't do that um, on demand under glass unless I, I have. Um, right, right. Anthony Camp. <laughs> yeah, it's like if I'm you're calling me at three, I've got to start at like uh, two fifteen and kind of work up, and then then come on, and then hopefully hold that energy and not be distracted of because you can't. You got to come in belief, a uh, pure energy of love and faith. As soon as you get into fear and you're the, oh is my hair okay? Is it, you know, or you distract and you pinch off a little right. bit more of that energy. Oh. What if I can't do it? You pinch off a little more of that flow. Right. Oh, this is weird. What if my friends see this? Pinch it off, and then you can't move anything. Right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so there, it is, I think it is with this new technology and art form of being able to create that flow and keep it for the camera. So I have to applaud you for, for your attempts. Even when they don't, I'm glad you show that right, you know, right. oh, I'm not able to get it right, right now. Because right. that shows, right. you know, people think, oh, you can move underwater. I don't perform and right, and, right, right. Yeah. And I think, you know, right. And then part of the reason why I started doing more lives is because I felt like if I am actually showing that there's, especially to the skeptics, you know what I mean? If I'm actually showing that some days I'm successful and some days I'm not, then it's like, okay, this guy's definitely not faking it because if I was fake, because if all these people are faking it, then, you know, it'll be a hundred percent success rate every time. But if I'm struggling sometimes, and if I can actually show that real authentic self of myself struggling with it, and then people can know, okay, like, you know, this guy's the just human side of it. Right, right, right. So that's, that's part of the reason why I started doing a lot of lives. And honestly, awesome. right, right. And when you, obviously when I do my stuff live, it's not really that impressive. I'm just going, I'm struggling to move just a one piece of paper and stuff. Yeah. It's not impressive at all and stuff, but I prefer to show my real, um, yeah, yeah. I, I just prefer to 
show my warm That's a very organic, natural, approachable to, to let people know, okay, right. I don't just do it. Oh, I'm not doing it right. And they start. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. They give up. Right, right. Yeah, they definitely. Um, sorry, give me one sec. Um, but yeah, yeah so, I'm just playful with it. And, and right. I don't know what I can do. And, and if I think about it too much, I won't be able to do it. But if I'm right. inspired by watching Trevor Seven or a luminous number seven or you or Antonio. I, <laughs> I, 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 I I'm I'm honored that you you say me because I I really don't consider myself anything special. I mean no, I, but you, I you have up. an energy flow that is allowing people to to be inspired and go through with it. Well, you I, have that I, I energy. Really appreciate you that. can't not deny that. You can't I, I deny that. That. I, that. That means a lot. Um, coming from someone like you. So, I mean, Anthony's going to come on soon. Um, so any final thoughts that you, you have, uh, any, um, you know, tips, advice, anything? Yeah. Experiment and be playful about it right. and don't be so hard on yourself and, and, and put awesome music on that makes right. when your heart feels like it's glowing and you're in that happy state, that's when things move for you. If you're so serious, I, oh, I got to get 12 hours in, or, you know, I'm behind and your energy will not flow. But if you can manage to raise your vibration, and it's a, it's a skill, it's something you work with because you might have emotional stuff going on. Um, if you can learn to, in diversity even, this is great for lockdown time, diversity, right. raise your own vibration. You right. can move yeah, mountains. Absolutely. Absolutely. You haven't moved a mountain yet, but right. some people will say a dream in your garage to the Smithsonian across the street from the White House might might be a mountain six tons i mean that's that's a mountain and right, it was just right. a raise your vibration with leaf right right well awesome yeah well that's that's so awesome that's a great advice well like i said michelle thank you so much and keep doing amazing stuff and keep improving and to keep being playful and that yeah let's just inspire the world with you. yeah basically it's it's i'll play and make awesome videos and go tag your it yeah Play yeah for sure for sure okay 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 <laughs> so yeah thank you so much michelle doesn't have a youtube channel as of yet or uh um I, I, i'm on a luminous number seven's channel he 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 uh okay. asked if he could show a couple of my videos and I, that's that that's all i've done so far because i'm very modest yeah okay. i'm i i don't i don't have anything to teach with other than be playful with it yet and um, I leave it to people like Antonio that is at a, at a different skill set that he can teach. I, I don't have that skill set yet, but eventually if I do, I would. Nice, I would. nice. That's beautiful. Okay. Well, thank you so much for this interview, Michelle. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs>